essentially how I feel about life. Full of loneliness and misery and suffering and unhappiness. And it's all over much too quickly. The question is, have I learned anything about life? My name is Morgan Freeman. I am standing in for the one you know as Zen Okame. I'm joined today by the co-host tonight, who has also been replaced for the night, and that would be my good buddy, Andy Dufresne. Andy. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what Andy Dufresne sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good evening, everybody. I'm Zeno coming from Essence of Zen, joined today by the one and only Lord of the Sith and all things IT, the Dark Lord of the Overlord of everything darkness and Sithy, Lewis, that Mexican also <laughs> known as Waffles. Send them all. Well, thanks for the introduction there, Zane. I really like it. It's like, I, I think I'm going to stick with Lord of the Sith. <laughs> For those who are, like indeed, for those of you out there who did not know the intro gag that was Morgan Freeman joke with the whole Shawshank Redemption, go watch it. Not now, but later. <laughs> after after the podcast, please. Right. And if you're wondering about the music, that is Destiny from our good good friend Pro Leader. You can find him at proleader.bandcamp.com. Oh, uh, so Lewis, how are you? Uh, doing good, doing good. Well, yeah, doing doing better than I was a while back ago. <laughs> Ever since I bought that uh, that Drobo. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sounded good on the website, but and once I got it, uh, wasn't wasn't as excited anymore. I will send Darth Vader to take care of them, old Dark Sith Lord Lewis. So they have this technology called Beyond Raid, which makes it easy to upgrade and downgrade discs. Mm -hmm. But uh, what they don't tell you is that Beyond Raid is a uh, Beyond Slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like a gigabit switch or a gigabit uh, port on it. And the thing, if I'm lucky, I'll get like three like megabytes per second. That's only, that's only after I upgraded from one disc to all five discs that it supports. Jeez. And I added the uh, hot, uh, what is it, what do they call it? Not hot, the hot cache um, SSD to make it even faster. Mm -hmm. Now still only getting like one megabit per second <laughs> or one megabit per second. I was so upset. So upset. You listen to say I'm returning it. I got a QNAP instead. Uh... Oh, and, and for those of you saying, like, oh, well, maybe your network sucks. No, I was directly <laughs> connected to the Drobo with the crossover cable, and I was getting uh, one megabit per second. And I wasn't just using gigabit cable. I was using, like, the upgraded 10 gigabit cable with Cat6. So I don't want to hear that crap. <laughs> I did that with uh, the QNAP. I directly connected to it, and I'm getting, like, uh, right now I'm getting, like, 41 megabytes per second so much better yeah yeah i guess yeah, you could I'm say so that sure. uh 
that that really grind grinded your gears oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just just right now the process of migrating everything off that and then dropping it onto the new discs is uh gonna be a challenge i'm pretty sure you can make it happen because you are the dark lord of the sith and it <laughs> Anyway, for those of you who are thinking of buying an AS, go for like uh, Netgear, QNAP, or Synology. Just don't go Drobo. They I've look actually... nice, but uh... go ahead. Yeah. I've actually been hearing a lot of positive things about Netgear lately. Like they they've been slowly like inching their way to the top or of like the spotlight area of many things. So I'm I'm uh -huh. I'm hoping to see what they have in store for the future. Just just a, a random quip. From my my mind, but yeah. they they definitely don't do or make crappy things. It <laughs> might be uh, what is it um, overhyped sometimes, but like they don't make crappy things. Yeah, well, every, it's pretty good. Every brand is overhyped, man. Like I mean, we're, we're gonna be talking about Apple in, in a few <laughs> minutes. I mean, it's like the perfect thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I I I don't hate Apple. I don't hate them. I I, I like a lot of things that they do, but if if there are anything, or there, there's nothing but overhypeness in, in, in the majority in, in, in that aspect. So, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a, in a moment. I, I do want to say I acknowledge Aproid in the chat who says, first, and then first, like, Hah! I see you, Aproid. I appreciate the like. I hope you stick around. <laughs> Thank you, Aproid. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, that's a good segue there, Zane. What Indeed. do you want to talk about for Apple? Like, so, as everyone knows, they, they had their little event recently, showcased the new tech for the new, uh, I, I almost said iWatch, but I meant Apple Watch, their iPhone 7, their iPhone 7 Plus, and all that good old diddy dotty shitty shally blah 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 blah. Uh, now what I'm hearing from your link, which we have over from AppleInsider.com, is not only is the iPhone 7 the thing in the news today, apparently... Their iPhone 6 series has a disease. That's a weird name for it. The Apple Touch disease. It is. Like what? Could, like what is this? A touch disease? I was thinking like like maybe like you know people are getting like diseases off like the touch screen. You know, <laughs> that's what I thought at first. But go on and explain what the touch disease is. Zane. Well, for, for, I, I, I want to say, like, let's be real here. When you touch an apple that has already been bitten, I mean, you're, you're bound to pick up a few germs, am I right? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, so generally, as you can probably guess, the touch disease is essentially dealing with the touch screen. Uh, they say that some 2014 iPhone 6 and 6 Plus develop a small gray flickering band at the top of the screen. You can probably see that in the image. If you're watching this via YouTube for the live podcast, you can see it. Uh, that is not a reflection. That is the, the legit gray band that you see. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 you're not going to be happy if you have yourself some graphical issues popping up. On your god dang expensive phone that costs way more than it should. <coughs> <laughs> so now they're calling it the touch disease. So, I mean, it. I mean, for Apple, all I can say is to to their benefit, at least it's not blowing up. Am I right? I mean, true. <laughs> like a touch screen, like failing is not to the same degree as you know, catching on fire. Getting banned from airplanes, <laughs> stuff like that, blowing up people's cars. <laughs> uh, but they say that, it, it, and it's also not affecting a uh, majority of the people. They say um, about 8.5% of the store's traffic for the iPhone 6 problems and 27.5% of the iPhone 6 Plus service customers were found to suffer from the specific issue. So, again, majority aren't affected by it, but in terms of the large amount of iPhones that, that are sold yearly, 8.5% uh, is still a, a, a decent number in terms of, you know, out of the entire spectrum, especially 27.5 being that you're, 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 you, you've passed a quarter of your devices. Uh, so, I mean, maybe 
if you want if you want to get really tinfoil hat here, you can say that Apple is doing this to kind of force people to say, oh, maybe I want to upgrade to the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. <laughs> like planned hmm. obsolescence. <laughs> I mean, some people are saying that uh, they're, they're not acknowledging the problem. Mm. And like some people are also saying that uh, it, it's due to like the thinness of the phone. They're like, you know, constant tap, 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 tap. tap. It just starts to take its toll. <laughs> See, more reasons of why to, ha- to, to keep the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Keep that thickness. Well, actually, no, no, because <laughs> last week we talked about how the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack really didn't save space at all. It They still could have kept it and still probably made it a little thinner if they wanted to. Anyways, though, it's, it's, it's just really weird. And, uh, I mean... Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say, because uh, I hope you have Apple insurance. <laughs> like one quick note on the on the headphone jack, I was actually reading like uh, one of the iFixit um, articles, and they were saying how uh, when they took apart the phone, uh, they actually found out that the removal of the headphone jack allowed Apple to uh, put in a bigger haptic sensor on it. Um, oh, yeah. And basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, now uh, the, what is it, the touch gestures, um, whatever they call them. Yeah, uh, touch they can be more precise. Yeah, support, more things. It's a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. So, I mean, they got that. I mean, which I don't know if you're in, into. Some people might be into, but it helped a little bit on that aspect. A bigger haptic sensor. I mean... Mm-hmm. The only thing about the haptic sensors that I, I can think of is, and I'm not trying to say that Apple's quality and like of their hardware is going to be uh, defecting within the next two to four years, but just like controllers or anything that has the rumble effects, you're going to see the rumble become less impactful. So it's, it's going to become, uh, so oh, it'll start oh, degrading oh. over time. Sorry, not, not, not like, a, it's, it's not like the haptic, um... Haptic sensor is the wrong word for it. It's more of a haptic um, controller, haptic. Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to say, uh, more of a haptic uh, GPU, CPU. Like it, it, all it does is just haptic feedback. That's all it computes. Oh. It's just like a chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's not like an actual little motor. That's what I meant by haptic sensor. Gotcha. Well. Yeah. I, uh, is, is that? A, 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 an upgrade that's really notable, like to, 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 to say it was worth it? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, well, removing a headphone jack versus, you know, oh, look, you could touch slightly better and, you know, See, do a e- little bit more gestures. Like, mm. Even your dog is like, why, 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 why? It makes no sense. Why, <laughs> why, why? No. <laughs> but no, um, and, and, and sticking on Apple with the decisions that they've been making lately, um, especially with the iPhone 7 now, um, I believe you said that, uh, was it iFixit? iFixit, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is coming from the source from the website, uh, MacRumors.com, which you'll be seeing now shortly if you're watching this via live, YouTube.com slash Essence is in every Friday, uh, if you're listening through our Google Play, uh, podcast, uh, platform, but yeah. So, apparently, you know those sets of speakers that everyone was like oh awesome uh apple went stereo with the boom mics and i mean not boom mics the the boom speakers on both sides yeah well actually the second ports of speakers for the grill at least might just be completely cosmetic for symmetry purposes yeah so it was confirmed actually i fixed it when they were like a lot, like when they were opening the thing, like and seeing all the new upgrades they had after they saw the haptic thing, like oh look, <laughs> they have a grill with no speaker there. <laughs> I mean, they still have two speakers. It's just on the opposite end. They just kind of made a faux, faux speaker port. Yeah, and see, I I I kind of feel bad about it because. The only reason why this kind of upsets me, and like, not, not even upset, I, I, I really don't care one way or another because I, I don't use Apple products, but for, for the Apple fans, rather, why I, I would be upset for them is if you look at the, I believe, the iPad Pro and the iPad Pro Mini, 
uh, they they rock about I think four speakers, uh, one at each corner, and you have this re- really nice uh, sound hit. You know, it, it it feels good, it sounds good, Chris, and you get that that uh, it's not like a a, 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 a woofer feeling or sound but because it's for you you just feel more into what you're watching or listening to uh so when you see this on the uh the iphone and you're like oh you know more speaker grills meaning probably more speakers no so take care <laughs> right it's i don't know man it's, it's just like if, if if it's not doing anything why have it why you know what? You know what? You know what this reminds me of? Go ahead. What? I was going to say, it reminds you of, like, uh, uh, car manufacturers uh, making fake engine noises through the, uh, your car speakers <laughs> to make it sound, like, more, like, like grungy, like, yeah. <laughs> and they also do it because, like, apparently cars are becoming, becoming so quiet nowadays that um, you end up hitting more people. <laughs> and people don't know they're coming. But that's exactly what this situation reminded me of. I was like, oh, they're just kind of faking it their case is aesthetics other uh people is just like to please the customer but i feel like that that's more like lying what the car people do this yeah. is more like at least to me like eh, mm, at least you did include both speakers and you're not lying to the customer you did say stereo so too yeah true and speaking on those um those the cars are becoming more sight now. I was actually almost hit by an electric car a few days ago at the uh, parking lot of a uh, convenience store because I, <laughs> I I couldn't hear it. I, I put the buggy in in the little designated area. I turned around and a car like like hit hit its brakes like really quickly. And I was just like, dude, I can't hear your car. <laughs> Change that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but speaking on the, on the grill again. You want to know what they could have fit in that 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 grill that, that area that, that has nothing there? <laughs> I'm you afraid to answer. <laughs> <laughs> a 3.5 goddamn millimeter headphone jack. <laughs> or you know what? Just another lightning bolt thing. So then you know you can listen to music and charge your phone still. Yes. Oh, oh again, that's one, of, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Okay, <laughs> look, the idea of lightning-based headphones is not a bad idea. You know, you got the, the extra power, or you can even do, like, fancy mics, because you can use phantom power through the lightning port, or the lightning jack, or whatever. Uh, you can also do things like, you know, LED strobing headphones that takes power from the phone with that lightning jack. That's cool. But there was no need for you to remove the 35 millimeter headphone jack with that, because you can have both. Options, Apple. Options. Learn about <laughs> options. People like options. Options. <laughs> uh, dude, I, I, I don't, I don't, I just, I just, I just, I just, I just can't. Sometimes, like, this is, this is what really I was thinking about Apple. Like, ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, they've, they've been doing interesting things ever since that Jobs guy kicked the bucket. Well, you know what? It, 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 at least, at least I can, I can say with almost certainty that I like Apple more than our FBI. <laughs> I like the apples, the magnitudes of apples <laughs> more than the <laughs> FBI. <laughs> so, do you remember how they had the uh, the whole San Bernardino? I, I, I almost never pronounced that word correctly. Bern, Bernardino. B- B- yeah, Bernardino. Uh, shooter terrorist attack thing and they like the whole iPhone that was locked so they was like we demand you unlock this for us Apple and they said no so they said we'll put back doors on it and Apple said no and then the FBI had thought oh we can't do our jobs to protect you and then they ended up making it worse because they were being stupid and instead of doing their job properly please don't hack me FBI and try to plant drugs on my, like in my house and because you might be saying this about you I don't I don't I don't need the the harassment thank you uh but no, because they couldn't do their job, you know, they ended up making things worse and got locked out of the account entirely. So they had to go to a third party hacking uh, company slash community or whatever and get them to hack it for them. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, now a bunch of, or at least a few other companies are now suing the FBI saying you should disclose the information or the tactics you use uh, to um, hack into that, that iPhone. Yeah, you should. 
there. <laughs> Why are they keeping it a secret anyway? I don't know, Lewis. Maybe because it involves aliens. Or sacrificing baby goats. Is that what it is? Nah, nah, that's Obama's territory. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. Well, I mean, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it is, like, taxpayer money that they spent, like, uh, or that they use, you know, to pay off this private company, so yeah. shouldn't we know? Exactly, exactly. It's like, oh, okay, oh my goodness, so I, cause I uh, I'm trying not to get too <laughs> political and po- politically correct here. Or have people like, oh, you're just being, you know, uh, 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 a sympathetic social justice warrior or whatever. So, look, I want to support our government. I want to support the FBI. I want to support the NSA. But when they take certain measures and certain actions to do things behind the books, behind the corners. And look, I understand as well, to do some of these jobs, shady things are going to have to come into play. I get that. But the issue that I have with them is they're being shady over things that don't need to be shady. Like, if you couldn't do this, if you couldn't hack a phone, if, if you're that <laughs> incompetent, and, and you could have you, you could have got the information anywhere else if you did your job thoroughly and as passionately as you used to a few decades ago, but if you couldn't even do that, and you had to get a third party to do it for you, and now that they did that, you wouldn't be like, "Oh no, it's our little secret now." Mm. No, you don't. You don't. You don't have the right. You don't have the 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 credibility. You don't. You don't have the support of being that viable as a group anymore. I mean, how, you're the FBI, and you couldn't hack an iPhone. <laughs> hold Let- up. Let me put on my tinfoil hat. Uh, <laughs> hold up. Turn on my proxies. So, I still think, and I think I'll always think for a while that. It was just an excuse to get a law in place so they could just keep doing this kind of stuff without having to ask permission in the future. Or like, I'm going to take off my hat. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably should not rule out uh, uh, that aspect of well, trying to say that this is why we need backdoors and etc. Basically, playing the fool. So, I mean, but. Even, even then, if you have to be like that whiny brat who's like 20, or, oh, oh, not 25, that's not a brat, that's an adult. Uh, if you're going to be that, that little brat who's like 8 years old and tells his parents, oh, I can't grab my own plate from the, the, the table because you want them to do it for you. Again, I don't think I want you to represent me as this line of, you know, Federal Bureau of Investigation. I, I, I don't know. Like... And again, because they went this third party route of getting it hacked for them, just makes me think again, why not just go complete like mercs? And I don't I don't mean like mercenaries in terms of violence. I mean like uh... <laughs> I, I could just imagine that. <laughs> Drop it from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> well actually that, that's, that's what kinda happened at the Native American um D- uh, Dakota a pipeline thing where they had sent mer- I don't know who sent mercenaries. I'm not gonna say who because I, I have my opinions and thoughts, but I don't know completely. So I don't want to spread false information. But when the Native Americans were was attacked in that protest, that peaceful protest, they had dogs sent on them. They had people beating them. A few were stabbed. Uh, it, it, mercs, you know, mercenary third party, none, none, uh, government uh, affiliated um, stuff. Is is is? I'm forgetting the proper term. Uh, but you you get what I'm saying. Basically, companies that aren't advocated by the government yet they're they, they're now doing government things. That's that's the um, wrong, contractors. Contractors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contractors. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, dude, we went off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the FBI's response to this? Did they like be like, yeah, sure, man? Or like, no, I'm guessing no, since you know they kind of getting sued. Well, uh, I'm reading here, it says a a spokesman for the FBI, Chris Allen, said that he could not comment on pending litigation. Ooh, fancy words. Uh, But apparently the uh, individual by the name of Ernest, let me find out who Ernest is. Oh, the White House spokesman, Josh Ernest, uh, made a statement saying, I am confident that the Obama administration will comply with the law. And I mean... Yeah, but the issue that I have with that is if this like lawsuit or this this, this case 
drags out for you know a long period of time, which it can, you know, mm-hmm. Obama's not going to be the one in office that much you know longer. So uh, let's get this ball rolling, please. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows how long it'll stay open? Oh, 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 Apple. I don't, I don't know how you got me to be more infuriated about other things, but you dodged a bullet this week. You you dodged a bullet. Uh, next week it'll be Samsung again. Just watch. That'll be the <laughs> next next one on our hit list. Good old Sammy. We haven't forgot about you, mother. But no. <laughs> Stop laughing, Microsoft. You're, you're the week after. No, no. Did we have a, a story about Microsoft and the uh, the product key? Oh, that was in our chat. Uh, maybe we could squeeze that story in later on. Yeah, we'll do it at the end of After Science if we can. Uh, but moving on to gaming, I see you have something about Harambe and, 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 and Capcom? <laughs> uh, so, uh, for those of you who don't know... Oh my Harambe. god, this is awesome! <laughs> Harambe the Gorilla... Uh, basically the one who, uh, you know, took a few bullets and, uh, you know, died. Um, <laughs> for actually, our sins. It's funny that, <laughs> for our sins. <laughs> that actually reminds me, that was like a Kickstarter I saw the other day. Um, it was for like a shot glass or something. And like mm-hmm. the Kickstarter was named something like, uh, shots for Harambe. Mm. And like the description said something like, he took a shot for you. Now it's time for you to take one for him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh <laughs> Oh man, people are just really uh, milking this Harambe thing. Oh my goodness, I don't, I don't, I it's need those game. shot glass. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, so, someone just basically threw in Harambe, you're basically playing as Psychic Harambe, so you get to use Harambe's psych- newly found psychic powers and fight through <laughs> each one of the <laughs> Capcom characters. <laughs> just the way some people will go for a joke. Harambe. You become so strong. <laughs> In death, I become stronger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, uh, the, the whole psychic aspect about it also reminds me a lot of Gorilla Grodd from uh, the DC Universe. And yes. I'm just, I'm just yes, like, that was his name. <laughs> oh, if 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 we could just get like a, a, a fan film of Gorilla Grodd going like ape crazy <laughs> because they killed Harambe. I, I, I would I, I would I, I could I could die happy then I could die happy. That's that's exactly who I was remembering. Uh, Grod, Grog. Yeah. I was yeah. Grod, Grod. Kneel before really Grod. Grod. Can I also make yeah. a quick note? I don't know Go what it, it is about DC villains and the whole kneel before thing, but first you have General Zod from you know he's a Kryptonian, who when he comes to Earth he always mm-hmm. screams kneel before Zod. And then you got this this crazy ape gorilla, you know, Gorilla Grodd, who's a Flash villain who loves to mind control people and make him or make them his his minions and servants or whatever. And he when he mind controls them, he goes kneel before Grodd. I'm just like <laughs> I, I I think a Zod and Grodd team up needs to happen. I feel like it's just like some sort of like Capcom inside joke or something. Oh. <laughs> uh... I'm I am I am extremely pleased with 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 this and and my 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 oh someone in the comment sections of of the the Kotaku link that's what we're showing the Harambe uh, game thing from actually mm-hmm. has the clip from Boondocks because for, for, if you did not know Harambe is actually a Swahili word tied to the uh, Kwanzaa celebration for the uh, winter holidays uh, and it's huh. it basically. For African unity, meaning unity within the the community and everything. So, if you remember the Boondocks in the episode where Yui Freeman um, had did the play about Black Jesus, I don't think I've seen that one. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's really good, it, and not just because oh, because Boondocks is great for many reasons. But let, let me not go in that whole route. But it, essentially, you had a classroom that's predominantly white, and of course, Yui Freeman, the main character behind Boondocks, is, is in that classroom with the white teacher, and he's trying to do like. Uh, appreciation and, and, and acceptance for other cultures. So he's like, oh, in, in, in Afri- you know, African American societies and, and culture, there is this Kwanzaa thing where they come together and they shout Harambe, Harambe, and tries to get the cl- the class to do it. 
So he then wants Yui to put on a play that showcases more about like the African American community's uh, culture and, and and society and whatever. So Yui goes, "I want to do a play about Black Jesus." And of course, the teacher, <laughs> who is a really cool guy, I mean, of course he's he's played in like this whole um, stereotypical. I don't want to step on any eggshells. I, I I want to be very careful about what I say type of thing. But that's like <laughs> the joke about. Boondocks. You have that on the surface, but his character is actually a really cool guy, very tight. He's very committed to the class, the 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 the, the students, and etc. He's a really, if he was a real teacher, you know, you would you would consider him one of the greatest teachers, you know, for a school or you know an award, whatever. So, the parents at the at, at the school don't want a a black Jesus play, so they they boycott the school. And of course, the teacher goes, "Yui, I'm gonna stand behind you, and we're gonna put on this play even if no one comes in to watch it." And that's kind of what happens. And it ends up because the teacher went against the board of regulations for the the, the school, uh, he, gets mm-hmm. a, he, he he gets fired. So <laughs> at the end of the series, or not the series, the, the end of the episode, we end up seeing he's now a professor at a college for African American studies, and he's up on the on the platform on the, at the podium with uh, uh-huh. I, I believe a dashiki going. Say it with me now. Horumbe. Horumbe. It's a really good episode. Dude. <laughs> Touches the heart. Nice. I didn't know the Swahili word. Learned something new today. Yeah, so was um, Ubuntu, if you didn't know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that one means what? Unity? Yeah. Yeah. Coming togetherness. But, um, but, so, again, a, a, another tangent. Got on talk, talk about, about Boondock somehow, but, I mean, um, hey, that's... <laughs> that's, that's what we do here at Essence of Zen. That's, that's what we do. So makes it. What makes the show? <laughs> so I think we're. Oh, excuse me. Uh, about that time where we're gonna play some ads. So we will be back in about five minutes after I go climb Mount Kilimanjaro for the third time. Uh, so, yeah. See you shortly. If you're like me, you enjoy losing a bunch of time searching Amazon for various gadgets and gizmos and trinkets and bobs and bits. Well, wouldn't you enjoy an extra $5 towards your Amazon account? Or if you have a mobile phone, either Android or iPhone, you can use our link to log into the Amazon app for the first time and get an extra $5. If you want to support Essence of Zen, I highly recommend you do this. It doesn't hurt. All you have to do is click the link and follow the two instructions. If you are eligible for the extra $5, it will be added to your Amazon credits. So give it a shot. You're helping us out and you're also getting an extra $5 in your pockets. In the meantime, feel free to support Essence of Zen by using our link to start a 30-day trial for Kindle Unlimited. That's free access to over 10,000 books and audiobooks for 30 days. Unlimited reading, unlimited listening, any device. When nearing the end of the trial, if you don't want to continue it, be sure to cancel the service renewal via Amazon.com slash MyCD. Thank you.
Do you... Do you hear that? What's that sound? It's the cold whistling of two gentlemen. One, the Lord of Sith. The other, some crazy black guy. Coming to you to whisper in your ears ever so softly to caress your eardrums sensually. Damn, we need a theme song. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I know one of our viewers slash also uh, I don't I don't know how to categorize it because kind of like oh, they're not official, but they they do help out Essence of Zen. Oddly enough, basically the, the the stream team, you know, Andy, Nick, uh, Kelsey, Wilbur. Um, yeah. But Andy was just like, uh, in his opinion, our we, we do have a uh, uh, a theme song or like you know um, our own basically little jig, and that's the April showers. The da 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 Provided by Pro Leader. So again, proleader.bandcamp.com. Go buy some music from them. Go listen. Fantastic artists in terms of turning old school jazz and old school blues with like a mix of modern day hip hop and beats. It's nice. It's lovely. Again, his new single, Destiny, is out now. And he's preparing to drop it again with the full album sometime this year. So stay tuned for that. Um, well, there you go. We actually had an extra ad coming off of ads. That's uh, <laughs> is that something? It's good stuff from them. But do you know where else you see ads at Lewis? <laughs> In porno videos. Not that I would know personally, but apparently, as we have here on our uh, our doc sheet, uh, I'm I'm afraid to click a link anything about it. <laughs> but according to Ars Technica. Porn, or at least Pornhub, is no more in terms of being connected via Russia? You know, only the top two. <laughs> only the top two. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, porn's, like, not illegal in Russia. Um, the thing is, like, Pornhub and uh, YouPorn tend to be, like, uh, have their fingers really deep in the interwebs. I see what you and did so there. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, a lot of their ads just pop up randomly out throughout like websites. And so uh, Russia and the Putin administration put down the ban hammer and uh, said no more, no more Pornhub, no more you porn. Uh, as you can imagine, people are pissed. <laughs> Both need literally and in the other sense. <laughs> need that porn, man. You you, you need that porn. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting because I remember reading something uh, a while back ago saying how like uh, cities that since have like the highest amount of like uh, or not cities, sorry, countries that have that seem to have the highest amount of like porn viewers mm -hmm. have the least amount of rape. Yeah. Interesting. Like, oh, interesting uh, correlation. Do you remember back when we was at UAT um, and we were hanging out with the Hoffman brothers? Um, yeah. And the, the the discussion, and I know it's gonna it's gonna sound funny to the audience, but we we had a legit like you know computer scientist here, you know uh, Lewis who graduated with the concentration in artificial intelligence. I myself for you know hardware, uh, and the Hoffman brothers who did NetSec, which is network security. We talked about the ideas of actually having sex bots and I, I don't mean that in like this you know humanoid thing that just like ooh daddy you know spank me harder or something but <laughs> and again we, we have sex bots already if you count and I, I'm, I'm sorry if you have like young listeners listening I'm, I'm, I, I apologize it, I mean it's called after dark for a reason it's not rated M or R or anything but <laughs> conversations can get a bit out there so I, I'm, I'm just gonna say the term marital aids you know, you you can consider those, you know, sexual m m machines. Um, so it's not like those don't exist already. So going a, a step further to have things which may be like Android, you know, uh, ambidextrous, not ambidextrous, an an anapomorphic uh, figures who have a human shape to them uh, could actually decrease um, uh, sexual predator rates and, 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 and things like that. 
the only issue with that is if you bring in artificial intelligence or see these humanoid robots in a, in a way of being another life form, then you just have another can of worms saying, do they not deserve better, you know, than what people may be using them for? And that's where the morality of computer science comes into play and the precipice of what it means to be human, what it means to be a living entity, what it means to have life as we know it trend over into life as we do not know it. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty deep. That's pretty deep, Zane. All this stems from why we don't have porn in Russia. <laughs> yeah, they just wanna just wanna wank off. <laughs> just wanna wank one off. Oh. I think that makes that article is not like you know all the on the counter backlash and all the arguments against it. Mm -hmm. Is a little tweet that they uh, included at the very bottom right there. <laughs> My Pornhub. It's like if we give you guys all Pornhub premium, will you allow us <laughs> back in Russia? <laughs> oh. Okay, you guys are frustrated. We get it. Just sexually frustrated. We'll just give you guys premium. We're sorry. Wow, that is, that is, oh, I'm sorry, you, you cannot, you cannot script better news events like this, I, I, <laughs> wow, wow, I don't know, it's, 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 it's fascinating, um, oh, also, if you're listening out there and you want to have more, con like, or, 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 or content about the conversation, about the aspects of artificial intelligence, robotic life, life forms as we may not know it, and how all these things come into play with our humanity, feel free to request them. Uh, I, I, I am not against deep philosophical conversations. Um, I don't like doing them outright because it can make me sound like a crazy person. But, but uh, I mean, people thought Albert Einstein was crazy. People thought Nikola Tesla was crazy. I'm nowhere near as great as those guys. But maybe one day we can start conversations about what truly makes us humans and our flaws and things and make actual logical decisions based on the repercussions of our society and not what makes us feel good or make us feel bad. So, shots fired, humanity. Shots fired. <laughs> I'm not looking at you, Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Harambe. The tr uh, uh, let, let, let me, I was about to say something really... It wasn't going to be bad, but if you would connect to something else bad... Oh, oh my goodness, there's a bug on my desk. Zane <laughs> does not like bugs, so... Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, little guy. You gotta die. Mm. This... <laughs> I was going to say, I hope you don't have to cut to another commercial break. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. It's dead. They, they got the bug. Now, okay, I... I again, as, as another random tangent, I don't like killing even bugs, because, like, you know... Believe it or not, bugs are alive too. And while I'm not like this holy pacifist or anything, uh, I mean, you take a life, you take a life, even if it's a bugs. So I have a, a general rule. If you're in my house, I'm more inclined to kill you. <laughs> if you're outside, <laughs> on campus, at a business, operating, you know, it, it, you, you, you're living your life, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not going to step on an ant because, again, if... Imagine if, it, as, as you stepped on an ant, a giant foot came from the sky and stepped on you. you See, I don't, <laughs> I don't like uh, killing killing roaches just because of like the crunchy sound. Oh god! So what I do instead is like I just buy a raid and just spray them and like just watch them like suffocate and die. I'm like, See, eh, okay. You make them stronger <laughs> though, Lewis. <laughs> Because as you use more pesticides, they can breed. It's like if the ones that do survive that pesticide, it creates antibodies and immune systems, and it becomes stronger. Yeah, yeah, I'll create a master race of roaches <laughs> and then demand a ransom from the government. And then you'll I'll, I'll become rich. You'll get that money, then be like, uh, I didn't think I'd make it this far. I, I can't make them stop. I can't make them stop. Oh no! Super mutant roaches. There you go. Super Ninja Mutant Roaches, Super Ninja Mutant Roaches. <laughs> we can start a new franchise. Rodent Power. Making my way to the Pulitzer. <laughs> uh, moving on with the entertainment news, however, though, I do want to talk about a bit about Marvel and DC. Um, so, Ooh. again, it's, it's going to be quick short because, again, anytime you talk about Marvel or DC, I get off tangents and I do, like, long <laughs> rants. So, first off, 
According to Heroic Hollywood, the director behind the Thor movies, that's Thor 1, and then I think, was it Thor Dark World, and who is now directing the upcoming movie uh, Thor Ragnarok, which is going to be a bro-fest between Thor and Hulk. I cannot wait. It's a mixture of Thor Ragnarok mixed in with Planet Hulk, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, he made some statements, uh, either today or yesterday, I can't remember which, um... But he basically admitted and confirmed that he had no plans of making a third uh, Thor movie. Uh, now, personally, I think this means he didn't think that he was going to be doing the directing for the third Thor movie because obviously, in, uh, actually, no, it could it could have gone either way as well because in Age of Ultron, that was Josh mm -hmm. Whedon's project, and they and Marvel forced him to put in that scene where Thor is just like naked in a pool, having a seizure, uh, which is leading up to Thor Ragnarok. Um, so, no, he, he, he probably, yeah, he probably did not know he was going to do Ragnarok at all. Uh, so, that basically made people become a little bit worried, saying, if you did not know you were doing Thor Ragnarok, but you're in the middle of directing and filming it now, is it rushed? Is the quality going to be great? You know, generally, most fans, uh, via, you know, dedicated Marvel fans like myself, or outside people who just watch the movies... Typically, Thor 1 and 2 didn't resonate that well with the audience. I mean, it did great in numbers, just, it, it's like the, I hate this phrase, but the red-headed stepchild of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, to me, like, Thor is kind of like a, a niche kind of crowd of people who like him. It's not like Spider-Man or Batman or Superman, where they have, like, a cult following. Oh, a giant cult following, at least. Exactly. Uh, and, and, I mean... It, uh, I'm not gonna. I, 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 I'm not gonna rant. I'm not gonna rant. I'm not gonna rant. <laughs> I think Thor Ragnarok is gonna be great. Uh, hearing that news of him not knowing he's gonna do a third one does kind of set me uneasy. But and I, I've enjoyed most of, uh, of of the Marvel films, so I have no doubt in my mind that a cool, awesome bro journey between Hulk and Thor is gonna be amazing. It's. I mean, it's flat out. It's gonna be amazing. I. I no arguments. For me, at least. It's going to be amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Taika Waiti, do your thing. I love the beard. Keep it going. That is um, a pretty sick beard. It is, man. I, I wish I could grow a beard like that. I, I, I really do. <laughs> One day. In other news for DC side of things, um, the rumor about Harley Quinn... Okay, get out of my face, Independent. Uh, the, the rumor about Harley Quinn having her own movie coming up in the future, I did videos in the past about it. We talked about it on the podcast, I think episode three or four or something. I can't remember. Uh, basically where I said I would love it if the movie is about Harley Quinn teaming up with someone like Poison Ivy, maybe even Catwoman, and having the trio mm -hmm. eventually uh, run into Batwoman or Batgirl and etc. And like, it, it has a lot of potential to be awesome. But what really caught my attention, and which I'm like even more hyped about now, is that Margot Robbie, the actor who plays Harley Quinn, is going to be a co-producer to it, baby. Yeah! Huh. That's pretty neat. It is. It's a pretty sweet gig. Now, of course, other people like are, are, are saying, oh, no, why? I mean, she has no talent aside from acting, oh, blah, blah, blah. No, hold your horses. Two things. If this makes you uneasy... She's not co-directing. She's co-producing. I mean, yes, she's, she's going to have judgment calls that she's going to make, which I believe she can do amazing because she was an amazing Harley Quinn. Uh, but, too, no, she actually has talent in terms of pr production, uh, direction, and more things. She actually owns her own company. Um, it's called Lucky Chap, I do believe. Let me double check. Uh... Lucky Chap? What's it do? Uh, it's, it's her company that, that works on producing movies. Um, ah, got it. Yeah, Robbie's pr um, pr production company, Lucky Chap, hailed by Robbie, Tom Ackerley, as well as uh, Jose McNamara and Sophia Kerr, have numerous projects currently on the move. The company is producing upcoming neo noir thriller The Terminal, as well as Tanya Harding's biopic I Tanya, and uh, an adaptation of Bad Monkeys. So she has a company. She's been working in this this uh, genre for a while now. She's not some green-eared person coming on the scene out of nowhere. So, basically, chill. Thor Ragnarok is going to be amazing, and the Harley Quinn spinoff is going to be amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm totally down. Any word on when we'll find out what it'll be called? 
I I don't think we're we're gonna know the title anytime soon. Maybe for like another year, because um, mm. it's currently not slated for a release date or a uh, production date. Uh, it, it's not even on the list of the DCEU lineups, and they just mm-hmm. announced that the Man of Steel sequel is in the works without it being slotted just yet. So I mean, I'm I'm not mm. worried about it because a lot of people tend to have an issue whenever a movie is given a date. So. But moving on to the science news, tell me yeah. about these driverless cars, Lewis. <laughs> so, like, uh, most people tend to think, like, oh, man, when I have a driverless car, I'll be doing this, I'll be doing that, I'll finally be able to catch up on my sleep, you know, <laughs> be able to do my homework as I'm going to school. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, a new study actually suggests the opposite, um, that most people are actually going to be too worried about crashing to even actually, uh, <laughs> um, what is it, do something else, be productive in any other way while they're self-driving, or self-driving, while they're in the driverless cars, or drive self-driving car sorry (laughs) because you're gonna be in the car itself (laughs) which is kind of funny because you have a a driverless car or self-driving car you're gonna be in the driver's seat but you're gonna be even more uh panicked and paranoid and afraid than when you're just normally driving (laughs) your self-driving car so might as well just drive it (laughs) now see I, i i think the initial reaction will, of this will be accurate, as in, let's say the first two months of someone who has a uh, self-driving car will be extremely nervous. But I guarantee you, if they can go two to five months, or even six, without any accidents or, or anything that scares them while it's driving automatically, they will become so more at ease that I guarantee you it'll it'll like do a reverse um, effect, whereas they'll be doing a lot more in the car besides being worried about it driving itself. I tend to think it's a... Uh, like, even though you might become more comfortable with it, I don't think that'll ever go away, at least for this generation. And the generations that uh, grew up driving a car normally, I think that it'll take a few generations for that to uh, basically disappear. I, 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 I think... I, I think in a whole maybe yes, but I also th- I also remember the events like with the first beta testers of the uh, self driving Teslas, and uh, mm-hmm. it, there were like a bunch of videos of people filming from their car to another car, of a person sleeping at the wheel as their car drove them. So I mean, <laughs> I mean of, of course you're always gonna have the minority, a small select few who, who are going to you know be comfortable enough to sleep. I, I could never sleep in a self-driving car unless I'm, like, in the <laughs> back seat, buckled in with, like, five buckles, and knowing that I'm going to be protected no matter what, then sure, maybe, probably, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. Mm. On the side note, a positive side of being asleep, and if you do end up crashing, is you're going to already be limp. So, <laughs> I mean, you won't get as jacked up as if you were, you know, uh... Was it bracing completely for impact and uh, <laughs> tightening and you know? What was the episode of uh, the episode of um, American Dad where they're like, uh, if you're gonna get into a high impact crash or something, just uh, get drunk so and like, let your body go <laughs> limp. <laughs> I don't remember that episode, but it definitely sounds like an American Dad episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great show! It 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 really is. Um, that actually wraps up most of what we had to talk about for the topics. Uh, you did want uh, to bring up that Microsoft thing. Didn't oh you? yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, if I can yeah. find the link again, uh, let me go through the the Slack channel stuff. Yeah, should be some uh, Slack. Uh, I'm doing the uh, the Tina from Boss Burgers. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was like the. The product key, there you go. It's right under the it's right under the USA Today article I sent. Haha. Oh, there quick note, go. the uh the, the link used for the driverless cars pitch was via dailymail.co.uk. 
Uh, and the news we're about to do right now is based from neilsmart.net. I, I'm going to get into the, uh, the, the, the habit of naming our sources. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess that, yeah, that works for the audio right. version of the podcast. To, uh, yeah, keep on forgetting we have that too. So what's going on with this Windows T? Uh, oh, Windows T, my God. Windows 10 <laughs> embedded product key <laughs> tool. Yeah, so like, uh. I, I've been wondering this for a while, and apparently some of a lot of Windows or uh, long-time Windows users, sorry. It's so where did that sticker go? Remember you just have like a, that sticker on your laptop or on your desktop when you bought a new Windows PC, it had like the serial key. <clears throat> and then like it just disappeared with like the advent of uh, Windows 10. I think the last version it was on was Windows 7. Mm -hmm. uh, well apparently uh, some people did some investigating. And they basically found out that uh, the serial key now is embedded in the NVRAM uh, on your motherboard. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, one, it's cheaper for Microsoft uh, because to individually have to punch in different numbers as a sticker for all these dozens of computers mm -hmm. can get kind of pricey. And two, um, also being pricey, uh, the sticker would tend to fed away fade away, you know, because it'd usually be located by the fan or in the back or somewhere in conspicuous. So when users were trying to reinstall or, you know, get their serial number, um, it just wouldn't be there anymore. Uh, so this guy basically created a utility to pull it out from the NVRAM. I think it should be easier to pull it out, but hey, at least now we know it's there and you can't really remove it because it's embedded into your motherboard. Yay. Is that a challenge, Lewis? <laughs> I will grab my, my pliers right now and I will rip this thing off of my mother. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just joking. <laughs> I think it's uh, somewhere by the UE, UEFI chip, if I, if I said that correctly. Yeah. yeah, but Windows is just getting more and more integrated into the hardware. And, 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 as we, as we, we talked about this, you know, personally, uh, bef like today while I was at work, but, um, I don't. I don't know if this is gonna be a good move for Microsoft or a bad move. Uh, it, it's it's too soon to see right now, but it definitely has its pros and it definitely has its cons. I, we just need to see how Microsoft is going to continue on this route and exactly how they make their moves. It's cool because I mean you don't have to have a sticker to keep track of and if I ever want to reinstall Windows on a machine with Linux um, I guess I just can because I always I always wondered that I ended up uh, having to restore my girlfriend's PC and I removed Windows completely and uh, I put it in Windows uh, 10 while it was still free <laughs> and uh, I realized I was like wait it never asked me to activate or never asked me for a serial number and well now I know the answer it's because it's like integrated into the system itself so there's no need for that. <laughs> it's it's and, and thinking from from, the, from that direction, it really does sound like a big bonus. And uh, again, it's like the curse with Microsoft for the new generation of twenty or starting at twenty sixteen. Whereas they'll do something really cool and then mess it up, <laughs> and then they won't. <laughs> <laughs> Like, again, I, I, I still have an issue of trying to find out how the hell they had their Windows mobile platform fail as hard as it is. Because, like, I'm, I'm looking at Windows now with my, my laptop, which is a Microsoft Surface Book. I did a video on that on YouTube on our channel. Go check it out. It's actually our featured video right now, if you haven't seen it, over at YouTube.com. Go watch it. Um... I, I, I use Windows 10, and I, I really love it. I mean, I'm using their, their mail app. Now, as my default uh, third-party mail client over Thunderbird, which is a first. Mm -hmm. I, I, wow, Microsoft, you actually got me using one of your apps as a default app. My my goodness. <laughs> um, and then you have things like you know they're bringing in Bash, but you also have Chocolatey. I'm just like, how can you not have your phones do the same amount of cool things? Like I don't, I don't understand. I really don't. <laughs> I don't, Lewis. Like, I find myself, like, becoming this pseudo-Microsoft fanboy within going, 
No, because they 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 suck it a lot. So I I can't completely devote myself to their <laughs> platform. <laughs> Just keeps on your toes. Yeah. Keeps on your toes, Zane. Like they, again, in terms of gaming, they're trying to do this whole. If you buy a game on Xbox One, you can play it on the PC for free. You know, it's like cool. But then you hear rumors about them trying to mess up Steam. Not cool. What the hell, Microsoft? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't, I don't know, dude. Microsoft is a, it's an interesting one. They piss me off, they make me happy. They piss me off, they make me happy. I'm like, ah. It's an abusive uh, relationship. That's, 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 that's an abusive solid relationship. Oh. Uh, um, oh, things that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the podcast, and that was um, uh, two things. Uh, at my new job, we're working on a few new projects. That's um, ATL Maps, um, and a few things that I can't disclose just yet, but I will in the future. Um, we got some few projects coming online for Essence of Zen. Well, it's going to get a, a, a nice little makeup upgrade. Hopefully, if I can figure out some CSS code in the next week or so. Uh, some new <laughs> products. Um, we were working on a, on a on a Twitter bot, and I have the basic functionality working. I just got to get things like uh, threading installed. Uh, maybe installed is not the right word, but I want to get threading up and running so it can basically search the web while also taking in commands from myself to do automatic tasks and add to a queue of data. Uh, other than that, that's coming soon. Um, Log Snoot got uh, a, a few, uh, uh, an increase in traffic because I told Ooh. the lady who had a tutorial on uh, making Twitter bots because she she set up this weird pseudo log script thing for her for her bot. Yeah, and I told her, hey, I created this Python library that you know makes logging files so much easier. And she said, uh -huh. you know, well, let me see it. So I sent her the link. And she loves it. She she literally went, you know, so the snoot looks for some snoops to be boot by so it can tell you what snoops the snoop found. It's like, yes, yeah, she gets it. She <laughs> gets it. Ah. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss, uh, what is it, book or phrase. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we our, our quote-unquote products are starting to come in line. I know I am, like, seriously late about the whole Android app thing. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on it real quick. I'm just overworked <laughs> with the editing, uh, quizzes and exams, homework, work, and work. Yeah. <laughs> in life. So you know we're getting there. We're we're getting there. Uh, so Lewis. So Zane. Is there anything that's been going on that you want to talk about via the the the, the, the final touches or the end of the podcast? Uh, you get that NAS thing up and running again. Um, Scarlet, uh, and yeah, work on that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a, that's in the backboard. Like <laughs> it's it's been overdue for a while now. Yeah. Uh, and you need to help you with programming with uh, the the soundboard and uh, Twitbot. I think I also said. Oh, I actually made progress on the uh, the soundboard. Um. Uh -huh. Right now, I, I've set up a layout for the Java FX FXML that has mm -hmm. a virtual box nested with a grid layout panel or a grid pane, as they call it. And I'm, I'm right, right now, the, the last bit of things I'm going to work on is getting the buttons to load via the, the Java file in a re. Mm -hmm. Either a recursive loop or a for loop based upon what's inside of a an array of a an, a class known as sounds, which is basically our object utilized for the name of the sound and the path to find that sound file. So once that's up, I will send it to you and we can start like making it more public. Woo. Yep. Ugh. Um I really should have thought of the closer more. Because there's actually a lot of weird news and things going on at EOZ. I'm in talk with some more people who wants to help out. But again, we've been on this road before where people say they want to help. They come in and then <laughs> kind of stall out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we're going to get more public or more... more um, 
what's the word more traffic uh, soon because a lot of people from my college found out that we do a YouTube you know channel stuff and we have a website and a community and um yeah so hopefully within yeah. the next week we'll see like at least a dozen to 30 or, two or 40 people at least become more cognizant of our content Ooh. oh and finally how did I forget this <laughs> dude oh, we're at 495 subs as of recording this. Yep. You know, we bump it up. Five more subs and then we're going to hit our 500 sub mark, dude. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Should be fun. Anywho, guys, it is now 11.10. We've been streaming to YouTube for 49 minutes. We're going to go ahead and step out for a bit, let you guys do what you do best. Find us next week, Fridays, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, Essence of Zen, After Dark, you know our jam. And if you have not heard, we have moved away from Twitch, and we are now over at beam.pro slash Essence of Zen for our Sunday streams with Passive Exile featuring the stream team with our current setup, the Chill Squad. That's myself, Zeno Kami, with Andy, aka Pyrana, Kelsey, aka Clordock. We have D Wilbur, aka D Wilbur, <laughs> 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 and Nicholas, also known as Nick, aka Hulukane. That's Sunday, beam that pro slash essence of Zen at 3:30 Eastern Time. Sundays, Path of Exile, be there. We're doing Atlas of Worlds with the Essence League. Essence League plus Essence of Zen, you have a fun time. Let's do this. I love you. I'm kind of on a tangent ranting like a crazy <laughs> radio <laughs> spokesman person. Be there or be square. <laughs> What's that? Uh, pardon, uh, Spider-Man with uh, Tobey Maguire. The phone song. <laughs> Uh, I miss Macho Man Randy Savage. But we'll see you all in the next video or stream or whatever. So see you then. Until then, as always, take care. Later. <laughs>